welcome to my channel. The next step in making the baskets is coloring the paper rolls. You can color them in any color. I will start from the reviewing the methods of coloring the paper rolls. There are two of them. The first one is coloring by immersion and the second one is coloring with a brush. Each method has its pros and cons. Let's review them. Coloring the paper rolls by immersion is done very quickly and easy. You can color 100 rolls in several seconds. Also, you won't miss any spots on the paper rolls. The disadvantages of coloring by immersion include the high consumption of the coloring agent and longer drying of the paper rolls. The second coloring method is with a brush. It has several advantages. Low consumption of the coloring agent. You can use any plastic, for example, a grocery bag instead of a plastic container. The paper rolls will dry faster. This method is especially helpful if you need to color the oversized paper rolls and if you want to color the paper rolls in such techniques as melange or aging. The main disadvantage of this method is that it's time consuming. Now let's review what can be used for coloring the paper rolls. Actually, there are a lot of options. I will name just a few. The only thing you do need to remember is no matter what you use for coloring the paper rolls, it should always be water-based. Such things as oil-based and gel-based wood stains are not suitable for coloring the paper rolls. The suitable coloring agents include water-based wood stains, powdered wood stains soluble in water, fabric dyes, both liquid and powdered, for example, Tintex or Reed, acrylic paint, and of course, homemade wood stain. I will cover the topic of the homemade wood stain in a separate video, but in a nutshell, you can make your own wood stain from a large variety of natural material. For example, pine cones, leaves, berries, tree bark, onion skins, walnut partition, tea, coffee, and so on. To start with, I will show you how to color the paper rods using the water-based wood stain. The first method is coloring the paper rods by immersion. You will need either a plastic or a glass container. I use a plastic package from the cake I bought in a grocery store, but you can use any other plastic or glass container of the suitable size. Wear the gloves to protect your hands. Add some wood stain into a plastic or glass container. I usually use a 500 ml canning jar. 100 ml of coloring agent is enough to color approximately 120 paper rolls. Add some water. Immerse one paper roll to see if you like the color. If you think it's too dark, add more water. If you need the color to be deeper, more saturated, add more wood stain. Another way of getting a more saturated or deeper color is dyeing the paper rolls twice or even three times. Wait for about half an hour before coloring the same paper rolls for the second or third time. The color is truly a matter of personal choice. If you are satisfied with the color you got, take a bunch of paper rolls, I usually color 100 rolls at a time, and immerse them into the coloring agent for a few seconds. Take the rolls out, hold them over the tray for the excessive liquid to flow down and put them onto the paper to remove any extra moisture. Sometimes I use the puppy training pads instead of the paper because they absorb the moisture very well. Leave the rods on the paper or on the training pad for 10-15 minutes, shuffling them around a couple of times. Then arrange the paper rods on the rack to air dry them. You can use any rack, for example a wire shelf, a cooling tray, a shelf unit, a fridge wire shelf and so on. I usually dry the paper rolls on the clothes drying rack. It takes up to 24 hours for the paper rolls to get fully dry. It depends on the ambient temperature and humidity. The second method of coloring the paper rolls is with a brush. I use a regular paint brush. Take approximately 20 or 30 paper rolls and paint them thoroughly with a brush. You can paint them in a plastic tray or you can do it on any other surface that is washable or disposable. Don't forget to wear the gloves. Once the coloring is done, follow the steps I have described earlier in this video and leave the paper rolls to air dry on a rack. 
Don't forget to shuffle the paper rolls around several times, especially during the first half an hour after coloring them. Otherwise, they may get glued to each other. Trying to separate them will result in permanent damage of the paper rods. Such paper rods should not be used for weaving.